And uh, Paul Menhart, our new pitching coach with us, you had a very interesting start to your big league career. There was that whole owners locking out the players thing in 94, and you were right in the middle of that. Yeah, unfortunately, I had to have Tommy John surgery in December of 93, and fortunately, they put me on the 60-day DL to let me rehab, so I didn't officially make my major league debut until 95. But you had some service time under your belt by the time you did that. Yes, and uh, you take what you can get, but uh, it was a it was a nice gesture on their part to, to think right. that highly of me and to let me rehab and get ready. Born in St. Louis, you went to high school in Connecticut. Then you went to Western Carolina University. I don't think we've ever uh, interviewed a catamount, by the way, here on Masson, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, tell us about the start of your professional career. The Blue Jays, the first to draft you, sure. and then you later pitched for Seattle and for San Diego. Well, I was drafted in 1990 as a junior out of Western Carolina and went directly to the short season in St. Catharines, on Ontario, Canada. Um, had an absolute awful record of 0 and 5, but uh, they liked my stuff and they called. They promoted me up to a, a, the next level. The, it, it happened to be up in Myrtle Beach at the time, and okay. I went 3 and 0 there with a 0. .5 something ERA, and uh, we were a playoff contender. It was really fun. And then one step at a time, eventually got to the big leagues in '95. Traded to Seattle in '96. Traded to San Diego in 97. I don't know if it was the fact that they didn't like me or somebody really wanted me. So we're still trying to figure that one out. Now, we look at those things that three different teams really liked you. So uh, they took a shot. And, uh, you know, Paul, I, I talked with Doug Harris this afternoon, 14 years in the Nationals organization. He had nothing but high praise for you as the coordinator. But there's a feeling among some of the people in the organization that when you get hands-on with pitchers and get to work with them individually, that's really when you're at your best. I, I can't say enough good things about Doug Harris. Um, if he had kind things to say to me, then you can multiply that by a million about the things I have to say about him. Absolutely. And, and that goes for almost everybody in this organization because this is a class organization from Mike Rizzo to the learners. Everybody's been so wonderful. I've, I've, I'm humbled, I'm blessed, and I, I cannot appreciate this opportunity more. Okay, so you're the coordinator going around to all the different minor league teams and managing and pitching, coaching in that time, and uh, that's a 14-year deal. Here you are in the big leagues, and now you're the pitching coach for Max Scherzer, Steven Strasburg, <laughs> Patrick Corbin, a couple of old pros like Anibal Sanchez, Jeremy Hellicks, and Sean Doolittle. Uh, let's start with Max. Get, try to give me about a 20-second thought on each one of these guys. Let's start with Max and what you see from him. He's a special human being, extremely talented. They don't come around like that very often. My first day yesterday, I got to witness uh, uh, Max Scherzer bullpen session, and it was glorious. We've we've had a relationship in spring training only, and now it's it's, it's uh, time for our relationship to blossom as uh, an in-season type of how can we get each other better. He spoke in those terms yesterday in front of his locker, Steven Strasburg. Steven actually was with me in the fall league when he, we first signed him, so I like to call him... Uh, well, I have to call myself his first pitching coach or yeah. professional pitching coach, and he performed so well out there in the fall league, and it was it was a no-brainer how good he was going to be and how good he still is. But he, I just watched him throw a bullpen too. We have we've had prior relationship too, so it's it's, it's going to go well moving and the, forward. And the newest guy, uh, as far as the big three, Patrick Corbin, got to know him in spring training. Such a superhuman being, first impression-wise, hard worker. I'm looking forward to getting to know him better, too. And then there's that guy out in the bullpen who uh, captures everybody's imagination, everybody's heart. Everybody falls in love with Sean Doolittle. How do you feel about that guy? He, he's unique in, himself, too, because I spent a lot of time not just watching the, the minor league games throughout these past 14 years. I'll, I'll, I'm tuning into the big league club as well, so to watch him do what he does and and have such a success that he does with one pitch, virtually one pitch, it's, it's special to watch. All right, one final question. You've been working with kids forever. Yes. Now you come to the staff and the guys we just talked about. How does that change your job, working with some kids, but mainly with some of these really great veterans who've been around for a while? I have been advised at every level that I have moved up to not change, to be myself. And it would not do these guys any justice if I tried to be something else. So I'm going to continue to be myself, 
I'm not going to come in here trying to make waves and change the world or anything like that. I'm going to, they're going to tell me what they need. I don't have a formula of why I've been so successful as a coach, but I do know one thing that these kids make you a better coach. Paul, we're so happy you're here. Congratulations on your promotion. Thank you so much. We've heard about your preparation, your relationship with the players. Can't wait to see it play out. Thanks again for your time. Not a problem. Anytime. All right, that's our new pitching coach, Paul Menhart.